It's yep. your Christmas Eve treat. <laughs> yep. And but guess what? This meal cannot be any more carnivore. It's as carnivore as it gets. And mm -hmm. so we're gonna Hey, carnivore hunters, this is Doug. Hey, and this is Rick. Hey, guys. Uh, so we've been watching some of our uh, older videos, and we realized that we've been speaking a lot about cheating. Um, and we realized that it actually may sound uh, to you guys that we're not really taking carnivore seriously. Um, the fact is we are pretty strictly carnivore the vast majority of the time, minus these few family trips that we've taken. Yeah, and so that's why we wanted to make this video, because we wanted to let you guys know all, all we're trying to do is highlight um our missteps we want to be open and honest and transparent with our viewers and um and for those who are considering the carnivore lifestyle uh that occasional slip up is going to happen and it's okay don't worry about it doug and i uh are both within uh 20 pounds of our our goal weight yeah. and our combined weight loss is uh over 90 pounds and i started this in uh june june uh, june 15th of yeah. 2023 i was and like mid-march yeah and so. here we are this the middle of november uh so our, our progress has been phenomenal uh we our health is just improved tenfold mm -hmm. compared to what it was just a few short months ago um so for those of you who've started carnivore and not had a cheat day or a week that that was it's kind of our message with these videos is how quickly that the inflammation and the pain can return and it's going to take several days once you get back on the wagon it, it's going to take several days for all those ailments to disappear again and um so that that that's been our intent yeah yeah so yeah for example with me um on one of one of my little cheat experiences i had had a little bit of wine with my wife and i had a um I, eczema on my ankle which i've spoken about before um and it actually took almost two days for me to even like have any symptoms but all of a sudden it got red and it started getting itchy again um and then it took another two days of strict carnivore for it to go away um so I, I think part of our message is one you know don't be afraid if you if you're not on the carnivore lifestyle yet don't be afraid and think like this is so restrictive um because if anything the carnivore lifestyle is very freeing um yeah uh, but things get things happen you're going to have family parties you're going to go out um and and sometimes you may not feel like you have a choice if you're hungry enough um and that's okay you just get back on the wagon and you go again you know get back on that horse um and, and for those of you who have started the carnivore diet and you know have not done any kind of cheating that yeah this is like rick said this is how fast um some of those pains come back and it makes it so you really don't want to cheat you know, yeah, absolutely. And, and and the other thing that I've noticed is when I have those couple of times that I've gotten something, whether it was on our ATV trip um, and, and I had that little little piece of like coconut chocolate covered coconut candy that I used to love. It, it was the flavor is actually disappointing once you get past those um, it, it, the, that food addiction. Um, you taste it and it's just not as good as it remember as you remember it you know i don't know if any of you since you've been an adult has, have had a twinkie they're 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 disgusting i mean even even before i got over my <laughs> food addictions twinkies are really gross right but they were something you loved as a kid um and that's what i'm finding with all these other things i'm starting to realize the stuff that's not good for me <laughs> doesn't even taste good yeah yeah no doubt I, I i'm finding that as well too um you know, before carnivore, I, I was actually trying a keto diet uh, and I wasn't really all that successful with the keto diet. I was able to lose some weight that I think I went down 10 or 15 pounds over many months. I, I, I didn't lose the weight like I have with uh, carnivore. Carnivore, I've lost the weight a lot faster. 
Um, and I, I just felt like I got with keto, I got to a point where I had plateaued endlessly uh, because I, there were a few things I was doing wrong with keto. And the first and foremost thing, I did not do my research like I did with keto or carnivore, excuse me. I did not do my research. So I was I was doing the keto based off advice from coworkers and friends who were successful with keto. And so that kind of hurt me. The, the second problem or the second issue with keto for me was I would basically keto started for me on Monday and then I'd work throughout the week. And, um, and then when the weekend came around, I would go out and socialize, drink beer, uh, you know, eat French fries, do, do all the stuff on the weekend that just wrecked any progress. I, I would lose two, three, four, sometimes five pounds in a week. And I would just destroy that in a weekend. Yeah. And so Monday would roll around and I'd have to start over again. And that's where my plateau came in. And, and I was go sorry not to interrupt you, but no, that's something good. that happens with, with carnivore is you get feeling so much better so fast that, mm -hmm. that you don't want to, you don't want to, have the beer on the weekend you know you might still have it with the on the special occasion or whatever super bowl or whatever whatever your your you know family tradition is but it's not you don't want to do it every weekend anymore it's it because it's just it, yeah not worth it right and and the other thing i found too actually with carnivore is you know i'd eat the the cheese and the pork rinds and um I, the first couple of weeks in into carnivore, I wasn't losing the weight until I cut out the dairy and the pork rinds because I would eat the pork rinds <laughs> mm -hmm. like a bag of potato chips. I used to sit in my chair, my recliner, watch TV, and I, I, I just demolished this bag of chips, right? And I was doing that with pork rinds. So I put the pork rinds away. Uh, uh, I do eat them on occasion. And the cheese I'll still have on occasion, but... Uh, once I eliminated those two things, the weight really came off fast. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think the takeaway from, from all this is the one thing I did learn how to do on keto was how to manage my weight. So I, like I said, I, I would wreck all my results on a weekend and not that I plan to do that uh, when, when we reach our goals, but I know how to at least maintain my weight now. And I think that's important, right, mm -hmm. Doug? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, we're all trying to get healthier, get rid of all our ailments, uh, you know, hit our ideal weight for our age. And, and I know how to do that now. And so when we do hit our goals, <laughs> I, I'm not too worried about uh, if I have a bad weekend or you know, if I, if I drink a beer with friends, I, I know I'm going to be okay because that, this is a whole learning process. And um, it, it comes down to the research, I would say that do right. your research. Yeah. And, and not just like, not just listening to us or, or, uh, you know, get out there, of course, with the carnivore doctors and um, the influencers that are out there, but also you, you have to kind of do the research on yourself and what bothers you. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. because I mean, this is carnivore is basically an ext what some would call an extreme elimination diet. You get rid of everything that causes you issues, your issues clear up. And then, you know, once you're feeling healthy and you're and or you're at your goal weight, you can try to start adding some things back in. And, and a lot you hear a lot of a lot of the influencers talk about that. Um, the, you know, I know Lily Kane admits she's not strict carnivore. A um, couple of the others say that as well. Um, I am now uh, because I, I still have, I still have weight to lose. I still want to make sure that my eczema is gone for good. Um, yeah. But once I do hit that, you know, I, I, I was a pretty good cook before carnivore. Actually, I'm still a good cook. I just don't cook as much stuff as I used to. Um, <laughs> but I like, I, I have a homemade salsa that everybody seems to love. Um, I haven't made it at all this year uh, because I'm not eating it. 
but um, you know that's something I'd like to work back in. And as long as I can work that back in, again, once I'm at my goal weight and and, and feel like I'm healthy again, um, I'll, I'll work that back in. And if it doesn't flare up my eczema or give me any kind of arthritis pains or or any other health issues, yeah, I'll probably continue to eat that. Um, and I do think that is is historically consistent with the human animal, right? Um, we we know that we we are omnivores. We have been we have an omnivore past, and uh, the reality is we would have only had access to fruits and vegetables, you know, two to three months out of a year, and so that's what I plan to do once I get healthy is is work it in like only in season fruits or vegetables and only on occasion, which is going to be what maybe 10% of the diet. I'm still going to spend yep, yep. most of my time, you know, I'm still going to fill up my morning with bacon and eggs in mass. And I'm going to make sure I have that big steak for dinner. Um, and then I might just kind of, you know, add in some salsa or, or, or some veg for flavor here and there. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, going into carnivore, I thought I would eventually work my way back into a keto diet. And I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that I think I'm going to live out the rest of my life being a carnivore. Or like keto. I, I, I think I'll be a little more keto for I'll, I'll be a strict carnivore at home. But here, here's the thing, like, uh, if you go to Texas Roadhouse and um, we go there a lot with coworkers and stuff and they don't have any uh, carnivore substitutes. So there's other restaurants we go to where I'll get a big old steak and instead of getting a salad, I'll say, hey, do you have some cottage cheese? And and I can substitute cottage cheese for the vegetables. Uh, but Texas Roadhouse and, and some others, they don't have those substitutes. So so I will eat a salad at, and that with all our cheats <laughs> that we've done, I'm finding none of the vegetables are harming me all that much. I, maybe if I ate it more, maybe it would, but that occasional salad here and there is not hurting me. It's the grains, it's the sugars. Uh, you know, we, I recently put out a, a video about, oops, I did it again. I, I uh, bought some food for some, for, for my crew and we had these sandwiches from a, a place called Chiba Hut, really flavorful, good stuff. But man, I suffered for three days after that with inflammation. And so that's kind of the good thing about this diet is when you slowly reintroduce some things, you can go, oops, okay, <laughs> I'm not doing that again. And right. so, you know, I'm going to stay away from the sandwich shops and the definitely the McDonald's and I, I don't want any of that. And especially if they're using uh, seed oils or something like that. I, I don't Which use they any, all are now. They all are, including Texas Roadhouse. I asked them one night because uh, I can't remember what it was on my plate. Uh, and I, oh, it was some bread or something, which I didn't eat. But they, they had, but you know, the little thing of butter that comes with it. And I said, is that real butter or is that a butter substitute? You know, is it margarine or something? And uh, and they flat out told me, no, that's not real butter. Yeah. And, that, in that restaurant we uh, go to for breakfast with hunting, we, we looked at the little butter things that they brought out with this. Yeah. With dad's toast. And sure enough, it was <laughs> mostly yeah. canola oil or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and wasn't margarine or something? Originally, it was meant to be a lubricant for machinery, right? <laughs> That's what it was. To, and somehow it yeah. wound up on our table. I don't know if margarine <laughs> so, was. I think it was Crisco I originally. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so um, th there's definitely people out there that can probably. I mean, if you guys are. If you guys know, let us know in the comments. I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I mean. <laughs> you think about that it's meant for machinery and and we got a great fantastic machine right here but man uh, uh, you know your body is your temple you guys have heard that uh, it just is mind-boggling where 
what, what Americans have done uh, to their diet. Anyway, um, I, you know, that's one thing, Doug, is I will not include processed foods and sugars anymore because yeah. the cheats I've had, that's when I felt it. So if it comes in a box or a bag, bag. it's processed. Uh, and I just, those are the, those are the foods that inflame me that make me feel horrible and take days to recover. And so that is one thing I've learned through this journey. I'll have the occasional salad. It doesn't hurt me. I feel, I don't feel bad doing it, but when I have those processed foods and those sh refined sugars, that's what gets me. It, it, yep. And it's miserable. It, it really, and <laughs> to think about all those years of living miserable from eating that stuff. But I, I guess you just kind of adapt to it and, and yeah. accept and, it. And again, they just don't taste as good as they used to yeah. anymore anyway. Um, so that's, I, that, again, one of, one of my favorite parts about carnivore is the stuff that just doesn't seem to be good for you, doesn't taste as good as it used to. Um, I, I've even said, uh, I think in a previous video, um toasting bread smells moldy to me now it, it there's an off like i don't know if i'm smelling the yeast or what but uh you know, my father-in-law lives with us and he uses that toaster every day and i cannot <laughs> stand the smell of toasting bread <laughs> yeah so. so hey uh carnivore hunters should we should we drop yeah. the bomb on them yeah, so let's do it Doug and I were having a conversation during our hunting trip, you know, we, with the holidays were coming up and we have a, a traditional uh, Christmas Eve meal that my dad has made for years and years. And uh, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but growing up because of what we were taught with the food pyramid, we thought this was the worst meal in the world for you. It's going to clog your arteries and give you a heart attack. And so yep. we only, so you can only food. have it once a year. It's, yep. it's your Christmas Eve treat. <laughs> yep. And, but guess what? This meal cannot be any more carnivore. It's as carnivore as it gets. And mm -hmm. so we're going to make a video on that and show it to you guys. And uh, we hope you love it as much as we do. Cause yeah. Uh, we, we I, won't say what it is right now. Um, couple of hints. It, it's, it's a, a very, it's a very culturally traditional meal for, for, for Scottish yeah. Irish, uh, families, uh, in this country, um, usually around Christmas, Christmas Eve. Um, our great grandmother made it, uh, every year. It's something my, our dad grew up having and, and he gave it to us and, and we've loved it. But we th always thought it was horrible for us, and we just came to the realization <laughs> a few weeks ago that it's a that's a pure carnivore recipe. So uh, I, I'm going to have uh, a little extra this year. <laughs> I, and you know what? Instead of eating it once a year, Doug, I might make it you know once a month or something because I'm telling you guys, it does not get any more key, uh, carnivore than this. And, mm -hmm. and I, we love it. We hope you love it. Uh, but as Doug mentioned, if if you think if you think you know what we're talking about, leave it in the comments and, and we'll let you know if you're right or wrong. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything else, Doug? No, I think that's it for today. But yeah, I'll leave it in the comments, guys. If you if you think you know, um, if if somebody gives us the right answer, yeah, we'll 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 confirm it for everybody. But if nobody yeah. gets it right, then uh, you'll have to wait for the video. It'll probably be pretty close to Christmas, so I don't know if you guys will have the opportunity to make it for yourselves uh, before we get a chance to drop that video, but um, we're pretty excited about this one. Yeah. Yeah. So as always, uh, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and we will see you all next time. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.